With this Flatiron Tuning Tech Tip, we're going to talk about brakes and brake upgrade path. Um, and things you want to consider as you're looking to improve your brake system on your car. And to kind of walk you through that, we're going to talk about the process that we've gone through to this point with our Pikes Peak Hill Climb car, which started life as a 2014 WRX. The first important point uh, to remember when you're talking about upgrading your brakes is that there's actually two different criteria that you want to look at. One is uh, actual stopping distance. You know, what is, are you trying to reduce your minimum stopping distance from a given speed? Um, in other words, if you do an emergency stop, jam on the brakes, get into ABS, and you come to a stop from a certain speed, are you trying to shorten that distance? Um, and then the other aspect of braking is, are you trying to achieve that minimum stopping distance over and over and over again consistently before you put enough heat into the braking system where it starts to be compromised and is not able to achieve that max or minimum stopping distance reliably. Turns out those are actually two different aspects of performance. When you're talking about achieving a difference uh, in stopping distance itself, that by and large has to do mostly with the tires and, and the, the amount of grip that you have that the brakes can use. Brakes need traction and grip just like acceleration does to work. And so your tires are going to be the biggest limiting factor as far as what that stopping distance is. Any car that can get into ABS, you know, when you jam on the brakes, you're pretty much going to be able to achieve that minimum stopping distance one time. If you're trying to make that shorter, there's really nothing you can do to the braking system to shorten that stopping distance until you put on a tire that has more grip, be that a wider tire or just a, a stickier compound of rubber. When you talk about being able to achieve that minimum stopping distance over and over and over again, primarily what you're looking at there is the, the braking system's ability to absorb heat load. So those are the two things, just as a, as a broad generalization, that you're going to want to look at if you're trying to improve your brakes. So with our car here, the 14WRX, we knew going in when we were you know, building it as a race car for the first time that we wanted something that was more capable than just what the stock brakes were. So what we did is we used a different uh, two-piece rotor and lightweight aluminum caliper. They were a little bit larger than um, the stock WRX brakes. They were approximately the size of like a legacy GT rotor. Um, it's different than these stock techs currently. And we saw a decent improvement, improvement in consistency of the brakes, but we actually pretty much measured that we actually had increased our stopping distance. And the reason for that is that the, we had an issue with the rears. We'd increased the um, braking power of the fronts, but in the rear we still had the stock calipers. With the 18 four, 8 to 14 WRX, you'll know that the, the stock pad is very small. It's a unique design. The compounds available are not that plentiful. Um, and so we were running the most aggressive pad that we could get. You know, we ended up having a more aggressive pad up front, so we had a bigger brake and a more aggressive pad than what we had in the rear. And that was shifting the bias so much to the front that we had actually increased our stopping distance. And being this was a race car that we wanted to be able to go full out and have 100% confidence in the brakes, we knew we had to upgrade the rear. So what we did in the back is we put in the Subaru 2 pots. Um, once we had done that, uh, we were able to run the same pad up front and in, in the rear, which was the um, Hawk DTC30. Uh, we're very happy with that pad for its performance at the track and at the hill climb. And that worked really well for us. Um, the next year that we came back, we started adding more aero. We had more downforce, so we had more grip. Um, we're also running our compound tires. What we noticed the second year, even though the brakes performed adequately for us, um, every time we'd bleed the brakes, the fluid would come out jet black. We started to notice a lot of wear on the rotors, even though this is a race car, it doesn't really see hardly any miles. Um, and we really got the sense that um, we were overheating them. So we had added the brake ducts uh, to try and get more cool air to the brakes, but with that arrow, it was just giving us uh, enough load up front that we were basically overheating and compromising um, the front brakes with that existing caliper. So that's where this year, uh, or for 2016, we upgraded to the StopTech um, four piston calipers. This is basically StopTech's version of the STI Brembos. That's a 328 millimeter rotor, but it's two pieces. So the rotors are lighter, um, the calipers are lightweight aluminum. It's, it's a larger rotor, it has a little bit more weight to it, it's able to absorb more heat load. Um, we've got a larger pad, especially the one we were running before. So it works a lot better, and it's made a huge, huge difference for us. Um, so over here, I have a StopTech six piston caliper. 
Why didn't we just jump to that? Well, the reason we didn't is something that you, as you're going through your upgrade path, you, you'd want to consider, which is wheel size. So we had already had uh, probably three different sets of wheels that were 17s. We wanted to use 17s because um, we just like the sidewall height and um, you know how that worked with the suspension that we were using. Um, and we had multiple sets of tires, so wheels and tires. So if we had gone to a six piston, none of those wheels would be able to fit, um, and none of the spare tires that we had we'd be able to use. So when you, if you were upgrading the whole braking system, the two things to keep in mind is one is you want to you know, look at what you're doing with the bias and possibly upgrade the rear in kind with the front so you have a good balance. But also, if it's something that the wheels on the, on the car, much less all the wheel sets that you have are not going to fit, that's something you have to factor into the cost. Um, so that's where we ended up with this one because the, the stop tech brake kit because we felt with this increase in size, you know, we're keeping weight down um, and, and that's, that's what's worked. You know, with the DTC-30s still front and rear, it, it's behaving greatly for us. Um, as we increase power or if we add downforce, which we will likely do both very, very shortly, there's a good chance that we might come to the threshold of what this caliper can handle, and that's where we'd have to look to something like a six piston and go with an 18 or 19 inch wheel. Um, but we wanted to try and avoid that as long as we can, just so we can get the maximum use out of everything that we have already. So that's something that you want to consider is, is you know, will, it, will the upgraded brakes fit with the wheels that you have, or are you going to have to get brakes and wheels at the same time? Um, and then also wheel fitment for these for a six piston caliper is a lot more difficult than a four piston caliper. So um, that's a whole other kettle of fish. Uh, and also if you're going to upgrade, you know, something else to keep in mind too is cost of consumables. If you're going to put on a brake kit on the car and it's a, your track car, you're going to be going to the track a lot. Don't just look at the cost of the kit. Look at the whole cost of the kit, which is what you know, what pad selection is there, how much are pads. Um, what rotors you're going to have to use? You know, with a two-piece rotor like this, um, the ring it, there's a great weight savings certainly, but the rings for these are almost twice as much as a one-piece rotor. So if you're going to be tracking the car a lot and using the car a lot, especially using an aggressive brake pad, then that's something you want to factor in to make sure that it's the right fit for you. Um, and that's you know again how we kind of landed at this versus the six-piston so far. Um, and again, as we had power and, and downforce, that might be. Well, it probably is in our future, um, but for right now, this is working out well for us. So, those are all the things to consider, and that's kind of the, the path that we've come with this car so far. Um, you know, again, pads, uh, brake pads, brake fluid. You always have to have a, a, a good performing brake fluid that can handle the heat load as well. And tires are the starting point, but if you want to go beyond that, those are the th kind of things you want to look at and consider as well. So. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, uh, please drop a like and stay tuned for more Flatirons Tuning Tech Tips.